Welcome to Apex Machine Group's Easy Sander training and usage video. Today we will be going over key machine features, the Easy Sander controls, as well as how to safely operate your machine. Upon machine arrival, visually inspect the machine and crating for any damage. If there is damage, make sure to let the truck driver know, mark it on the bill of lading, and contact Apex. At this point, you're now ready to remove the wood crating and plastic wrapping from your machine. Now we can proceed with removing the machine from the wood skid. First, remove the box containing the casters and the plastic toolbox. The plastic toolbox contains leveling bolts and it's your choice to decide whether you want to use the casters or the leveling bolts. To remove the wood pallet, first remove the four leg bolts connecting the machine to the skid. Then lift from the very bottom of the machine frame to separate the pallet from the machine. At this time, you can either install the casters or leveling bolts as you prefer, and the machine can now be placed in your facility for leveling and operation. Be sure to allow clearance for opening the doors on both sides, as well as room in front of and behind the machine to feed in and receive parts. Now that your machine is in place, open the belt loading door. Inside, you'll find a door handle which connects onto the outside of the door as well as a machine manual. There will also be a red shipping bracket to remove. If you purchase a three-phase machine, there will be a tag indicating proper direction for the belt to spin when the machine is properly phased. This can also be removed. Your Easy Sander comes equipped with a power cord which connects the lower end of the conveyor bed on the other side. We recommend that you have an, a local electrician make the connection. After your machine is properly powered, you can connect the compressed air to the nozzle on the right infeed lower side. With the power and compressed air now connected, we're ready to install the abrasive belt into the machine. Be sure the belt tensioning selector switch is set to the L position, indicating that it's loose and remove the locking assembly. Now, some abrasive belts have a direction indicating proper rotation. Make sure to place the belt into the machine with this proper rotation in mind. Place the belt into the middle of the drum head and replace the locking assembly. Now set the belt tensioning switch back to tight. Now that your abrasive belt is properly loaded, we can move on to the control panel located on the infeed side of the machine. At the top, we have the amp meter. This displays the total load on the main drive motor and should not exceed 75% on a normal basis. Next is the hour meter. This displays the total runtime of your machine and helps determine when scheduled maintenance is needed. You can refer to your manual for all recommended maintenance. Below the hour meter, we have the start button. This starts the belt head and conveyor bed. It's important to remember that whenever resetting or powering up your machine, to wait 10 seconds for the VFD to properly load. Below the start button is a setup selector switch. This allows you to jog the sanding head and conveyor bed. Next is the conveyor belt speed control. This is variable and allows you to run parts through your machine between nine and 30 feet per minute. Below that is the stop and reset. Next is the table readout, which indicates the distance between the abrasive belt and conveyor belt. We will go into more depth on this in the next section. Below the table readout, we have the table height adjustment control used to raise and lower the conveyor table for material thickness adjustment. There is also an emergency stop button on the outfeed side of the machine. Now we can demonstrate how to properly track your abrasive belt. This is your idler roll tracking handle. Using this handle and the setup selector switch, we will jog the abrasive belt and move this handle so that the abrasive belt centers on the idler roll. I'll demonstrate this visually.
If the abrasive belt is not adjusted properly, it will mistrack hitting the ceramic safety switch. If this happens, recenter the abrasive belt, push the red reset button, and readjust the tracking of the abrasive belt as necessary. To set the initial height of the table, we recommend using the scratch test method. In this method, we bring the sanding head about 50 thousandths above the thickness of the part to be sanded. This can be done with the power on and the door open using the up-down switch. Here I have a piece of material that's about 125 thousandths thick, so I'll bring the sanding head down to about 130 thousandths. After reaching this height, push the reset button and wait 10 seconds. Then with your hands away from the sanding belt, jog the conveyor with the setup selector switch until the part is underneath the sanding head. Now manually rotate the sanding belt while raising the conveyor table by turning the table handwheel clockwise until you hear and feel the belt lightly touching or scratching the part. Note that the abrasive belt is not powered up during the scratch test method. As a reminder, never turn the selector switch to the head position while hands are near the sanding belt. Now I'll run the part through the machine and show you the scratch test that was made. As you can see, the scratch was performed evenly across the part, indicating proper sanding pressure and calibration of the sanding head. With the table height properly adjusted and the scratch test completed, we're now ready to run our part. Before processing your parts, be sure to clear the area surrounding the outfeed side of the machine. Press the reset button and wait 10 seconds. The run button will not work unless the door to the machine is closed. Pressing the green button, We'll start the sanding head and conveyor feed. Here is our finished part. Now that we've ran our part, uh, there are a few additional safety features that I'd like to go over. Remember, there are a lot of things covered in the manual that were not covered in this video. So it's important to read through your manual before operating your machine. Opening the door to the machine during operation engages the disc brake and stops the sanding head for your safety. The machine will also shut down if the belt mistracks or is damaged, which trips the safety switches as well. There is an over thick bar across the opening of the sander meant to prevent you from running parts that are too thick or double stack parts that may cause damage. Be sure to hold the parts flat against the conveyor so you don't inadvertently trip the over thick bar. If you do trip the over thick bar, lower the table using the up down switch, then open the access door. Hit the stop reset button and turn the setup switch to the conveyor position and hold there until the part passes through the machine. Once the part is out, readjust the table back to the correct height push the reset button again and wait 10 seconds, then you are ready to start running parts again.